Hello, 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 and hello. Let's get some beef on the plate today. We're going to be listening to some Henry Cow. We're going to listen to the first track off of the album Legend. Uh, this would be the track Nirvana for Mice. And this album was released in 1973. So, Henry Cow, a band, a group that has popped up in the comments quite a bit, quite a few times. I've always noticed them, but I've never heard of them. I don't know anything about them. I can assume that they're prog, uh, just based off the name, to be honest, and the videos the comments had popped up under. I'm assuming maybe Canterbury sound, but uh, I actually have no idea. So, at least just looking on Wikipedia, the Henry Cow Legend, I guess is also one of the names for the album, is the debut album of British avant-garde rock group Henry Cow. It was recorded at Virgin Records Manor, hmm, my cold field, uh, 1973. And then genres, it says... Experimental rock, progressive rock, avant-garde jazz. So let's see what the cow is mooing up <laughs> today. I can't believe I said that. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day, a wonderful night as well. Really need to work on this tan. Uh, this is Nirvana for Mice by Henry Cow. Let's go. Don't have a cow.
Okay, all right, all right, all right. So we're going to listen to the next song, which is entitled Amid, Amid, Amigdala. Okay, now hear me out. Before we listen to that, let's just talk for a brief second about this, okay? Um, hear me out. Hear me out. This is the stew that is at least the first track from Henry Cow's Legend. Little Caravan. Little Soft Machine. Little John Coltrane. And literally just because of the end, a little gong. <laughs> like, this is this is hard music to listen to if you're not accustomed to this type of free improvisational jazz. Because that that is what this is. It is definitely avant-garde. It is not necessarily aggressive, but it does have a certain edge to it. That if you're not ready for it, <laughs> and if you're not accustomed to this type of music, it's going to hit kind of differently. I do want to know what do you think about it. Do you think it's messy and not really your type of thing? Or do you think it's actually kind of cool? Because this really sounds like a lot like Soft Machine, uh, from, from what I've heard. The only album that I've heard being fourth, which I've heard on my own. Um, but, man, the instrumental awareness of the band, of the group, in their playing is paramount. I would assume that this was played just freeform, you know? And the, bounce, the bouncing back and forth in the musicians' hands, in their minds, in their connection with one another is especially well integrated. I have to get a, give a lot of props, really, to everybody. But the drumming, to me, is mesmerizing. It flares. It's dynamic. It, it's, it's so exciting and interesting throughout the whole piece. And the horns, I think, display a certain type of melodic awareness with one another. So, for example, throughout a lot of the middle section, one horn kind of solos and does its own thing. Everyone's kind of like in their own groove. <laughs> but then you have what sounded like another horn on one side, some keys or organ or something on another. And it's almost like a three-way conversation. And we're the fourth person listening to the conversation. Have you ever been the third or fourth person in a conversation like there's already a group talking and you walk up and you're trying to join the conversation even if you're just listening you may not be quite aware of where the conversation was going or the topics at hand but you're trying to catch you know where the conversation is going maybe a and b are talking and then c joins in and then a and c are talking and then b is listening and then c and b kind of start a conversation while a is listening and once again we are d we're the fourth person. I feel like that's what, at least my experience is, listening to um, to Nirvana for, for Mice. It may pick up to that area here. Let's look right here. See, you have that main saxophone that's leading here. While, <laughs> really, it's more than three people. Everyone else is having a conversation right now. It's like a game of telephone in five minutes. But it's, it's ringing every bell. You know, to me, this is really cool to listen to. This is hot music to me. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense. This kind of music reminds me of a hot summer in a city. In, in some urban area, it's just sweating. Everyone's just burning up. It's a heat wave. This is a heat wave of music. It's not cool jazz. This is hot jazz, <laughs> you know? But to me, this is like really, really cool to listen to. And just to at least uh, like put a few names on here, Chris Cutler on the drums is cutting it up. Like, absolutely. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised, and maybe this is just my ignorance. Well, it is. I thought there would be someone in the band named Henry. But um, that's, <laughs> that, that goes back to the ignorance shown when I first learned of Jethro Tull. You know, um, Jeff Lay on the saxophones, the flute, there's two people who are handling um, those instruments. Jeff Lay and Tim Hodgkinson, and once again, their communication is absolutely perfect. Fred Firth on guitars, violin, like everyone here is doing so much. John Greaves on the bass, how absolutely wonderful to listen to. Let's go ahead and, um, actually, before I move any further, really quick, John Greaves was also a member of National Health. Mm, so we, they are, 
they must be a little bit Canterbury related. I don't I don't see anything here, at least initially, but I feel like there has to be some sort of relation. So let's go ahead and listen to the next song. I'm going to play the ending of Nirvana for Mice and let it lead into the next song, which was Ahmed. I'm trying to pronounce it right. Amygdala. 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 Let's go.
me that wasn't the cool side of the pillow. If the first track was the heat, was the sun, this was the moon, this was everything cooling down a little bit. Man, these were two great pieces. These were fantastic. Um, uh, sorry, we'll go to the next song. Okay, so Amygdala. Cool side of the pillow. I'm in love with the drumming. I really, I really love Cutler's drumming, especially his work on the snare. It's just so tasty. The work in lieu of the snare, the, the crashes or the rides rather, um, and the kick, like they just flow so well together. And this is going to be a kind of random point, but you just got to hear me out and where my brain kind of goes to. Some of the, the grooves that he comes up with, the rhythms that he comes up with, sound very, very modern. Now, in what way do they sound modern? They sound modern in a lot of modern hip hop, okay? And I know everyone hip hop, right? Okay, I'm not talking mainstream. I'm not talking radio hip hop. I mean like actual, you know what I mean? Like actual hip hop, right? So for example, one of the biggest producers is Flying Lotus, okay? He combines, of course, like hip hop stuff, but like very in depth with jazz, world music, things like that. And a lot of the grooves that he comes up with there like sound exactly like what I've just heard from Henry Cow. And that's that's like an attractant for me. That's like, oh wow. They were coming up with this back in 1970, I think 3 that I said when this album was released. That is like that's mind-blowing to me, you know? But it is so cool to hear things like that in music of the past, you know? Cuz this is not what I grew up with. This is not what I grew up around. So it's just really um in a sense mind-blowing to hear it. Now the organ that was used in the beginning, beautiful setup, the guitar playing, wonderfully captivating, and of course the flute that came in, yeah. This is just a, a little bit of whimsy. Isn't this beautiful playing here? The way the flute carries on like a moonlit wind. Can wind be moonlit? No, probably not. <laughs> but that organ to me really speaks to Canterbury scene. So once again, I'm just kind of I'm thinking that Henry Cow had some part in that. But, like, let me pull up just a little further. This is so, so revolutionary to me to hear this. And these melodies, I don't, I think if the first track didn't quite get your attention and you didn't quite like it, I think this one might be more your speed. It's a little more laid back. It's a little more, not reserved, because they still let their, their music and creativity flow just in a more subtle way. But I think this one might be a little bit easier to grasp on a first listen, if you've never listened to this before. This is just like, oh, when that comes in, ooh. Is that just a big fuzz box maybe or something? I don't know, but the elevation here. <laughs> listen, I would love to know what you guys thought of these two, uh, two pieces here. I just really quickly Googled um, what the heck is an Amigala? <laughs> Amygdala. All right, so I didn't really think about this, but uh, it is one of two almond-shaped clusters of new clay located deep in midi, midi, oh my god, medially within the temporal lobes of the brain cerebrum. It's a part of your brain, is, uh, is what, I'm, what I'm getting at. But specifically, it says shown to perform a primary role in the processing of memory, decision making, and emotional responses. Okay, can I tell you this? This type of music definitely gets an emotional response from me. And isn't that what good music to the listener should do? Should captivate and, and release some sort of emotional response from you. Should warrant an, an emotional response. And Amygdala. Playful, cheerful, slightly pastoral, very jazzy, extremely melodic. Has everything I want out of it. You know? <laughs> I'm just looking on uh, Wikipedia just to see if there's anything interesting about this album, I mean, obviously we've heard some interesting stuff, but just to see if there's uh, something else on here that may be of interest to us. Uh, now the cover cover art is just a really nicely colored sock. And it says that the work is by Ray Smith and was his first of three paint socks to feature on Henry Cow's album. So I guess the other albums from Henry Cow also have socks on them. So. Uh, and I guess they uh, used it to perform some puppeting and stuff at some points during their live shows. So that's kind of interesting. I guess they would also iron it <laughs> at certain points. Um, oh, mm, oh, 
Guess who was part of the production team? Oh, none other than Michael Oldfield. It says specifically for the first part of Nirvana for Mice. So the first part of the first song I listened to. Hmm. I mean, it was recorded in the manner, so you know, it makes sense. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought. Did you like this? Did you not like this? Uh, I really like this. <laughs> so uh, let me know in the comments below. But regardless of all of that, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. Hope that you enjoy the music. I know not everyone's going to enjoy everything I choose every day. And listen, if I had the time to record and, and you know, full time and everything, trust me, everyone, well, not everyone, you would get a nicer, even bigger variety throughout the week. But I try my best to at least get a little bit of, you know, hit all the right spots for most people throughout the week. And um, if not, you know, just keep asking and I'll try and do my best. But I am one man. But this one man at least hopes that you're having a wonderful one. Thank you as always for being here. Hope that you enjoyed your time. Come back tomorrow and I'll see you then. Bye.